So then guys, this is part two of episode five. So make sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoy it. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, if you just watched it, uh, episode five, part one, and you have and you uh, can't remember it too well, we just won Wednesday, three one at Bramall Lane. Um, goals from Clark, McGoldrick and Duffy sealed us the win. Uh, Duffy came off the bench and scored, but I, I'm going to go over the same lineup as what we went with. Um, DeWitt keeps improving for us um, on the training ground, on the uh, play training down there. Look, you can see they've gone by five overalls since um, joining the Blaze. But we've got Rotherham away now. You guys can see the lineup right there. So, yeah, let's get right into uh, the first match of this part two episode. So, you can see the table on screen there, and um, it's looking pretty good. We, Wednesday, I didn't realise that they were in fifth spot, but we did manage to win them. Fairly comfortably, I thought, in the end. Um, hopefully, the Rotherham line should be coming on screen sooner, unless I've accidentally skipped past it. But you can see they've got Will Volks in it, and Jack O'Connell on screen there. They always do this face really dodgily. And I don't know if it's because he's just got a difficult face to, uh, you know, master or whatever. They just don't do it right. But you, I suppose you can see Leon's face there on the left hand side as well. They've done that quite dodgy. So. They must just not do a very good job of the faces. I think I've skipped two. No, no, the lineup on here is on screen right now. They've got Matt Smith, or is it Michael Smith? It's one of them up front, very tall. But Joe Newell, and um, I don't know what else they've got on the wings to be fair. It's a very defensive lineup. We've got Newell and Towell on the wings. Uh, Towell is more of an inside player, I thought, but that lineup is rather defensive. So we might have a bit of difficulty to uh, break through at first. But I feel like once we've got one, or if we get one, we may we may be able to get two more, two or three more. So we uh, let's get into the first match of his part two. Let's go. Right, Paul Coots has got it over to Bordock, and I've got a good feeling about this attack for some reason. David McGoldrick, I'm gonna cross it in, and uh, anything, no road that's punched out. All right, John Fleck has got it over to George Bordock wonderfully, and Bordock, what can you do with it with your left foot? Into Leon on the overhead kick. I got it on the green power bar as well on the time shooting and um, it's gone well over. Right, Joe Newell has crossed it in and at the back stick there's Richie Towell and he's crossed it in and Matt Smith has hit the post. Michael Smith, sorry. Bloody hell, could have done better there defensively and uh, they've had the best chance of the match. Right, Paul Coots is on the ball. He's going to get it into Leon on the inside. Over to Fleck and Leon has got it out wide to Marvin Johnson. That was... Probably our best attack of the game, which is saying something. From the following corner, we've got McGoldrick. And McGoldrick! I thought that was in. What an opportunity that was. And um, I think that was probably the closest shot we've had all game. Let's have a look. Yeah, that is extremely close. Rodak wasn't getting anywhere near it. So it's half-time now. And I say that both sides have had one good chance each. Obviously, Michael Smith hit in the post for Rotherham. And that late chance we just had with McGoldrick just going wide the post. But... I don't know who to bring, I'm going to bring on DeWitt, I'm going to bring off Coots, bring Fleck inside with Norwood as a midfield duo, and DeWitt, I know you can't play Cam, but when you look at your attributes, you're probably the best thing for that, because uh, you're not the fastest player for a winger, and we've got Johnson playing there, and then seems as cover, so DeWitt, uh, I'm working you in gradually, let's see what you can do against this Rotherham side, which are very defensive, but also breakable, downable, if that makes sense, I can break them down. Right, John Fleck, he's got it over to DeWitt. DeWitt back inside to John Fleck and I've accidentally done the chip shot. What was I doing? Right, Leon Clark over to McGoldrick and he's got onto it. I really don't know what to do here. I've just got to go to Lone and I'm going to do a cross to the back stick and they're just defending numbers, don't they? They surround you and you can't do much if you hold on for it with it for too long. Right, McGoldrick has got it over to Marvin Johnson. He's bloody knackered. Well, I'm going to bring him off in a second and he's crossed it into DeWitt and on his first start for the club he takes a poor touch and is at least one of the corner I suppose but um, substitution time let's bring off Marvin Johnson since he's knackered and we need that bit of width um, and a bit of fresh energy I'm going to bring off I don't think I'm going to bring off Bordock I mean because is um, you know we don't play down the right hand side as much as we do the left and we have McGoldrick who's fresh anyway uh, but we are going to bring off uh, Clark for I'm going to bring off Sharp. None of these two here have really made the most of their opportunity. So every game I'm going to bring on one of them at a time. And if any of them take their opportunity, they will be rewarded with starts and being brought on more. But uh, yeah, 
Stevens and Sharp coming on. We've already made our other sub with DeWitt coming on at half time. And uh, this match, I thought it was going to be easier if I'm perfectly honest. Rotherham, they've just sat back and um, we haven't really been able to exploit it like I thought we could. And yeah, you can see there, I just can't get my head onto it. Billy Sharp, he can't take a touch inside the box. It happened the same against um, Forrest. He just can't take the touch. Right, John Fleck has just played the 1-2 of Ender Stevens. I'm just going to cross his tin. Billy Sharp, back post. Second try. Third try. Bloody hell. This match has been pretty annoying because um, every time I've tried to cross tin, it's been blocked. Every time I've crossed tin, we've not really been able to add it in. Every time that they've attacked, they've managed to get the ball forward. You know, managed to lob it over our players. And apparently the likes of Keen Bryan just lose pace. And... Um, Overall, Rotherham have dominated us in that match on the starts. The last said about that, the better. I'm guessing that we'll be in about 4th or 5th after that because other teams will have won around us. And um, in case you can't tell, I am frustrated after that and I'm just speaking quickly um, in preparation for the Brentford game. Now, because we're going to have players that are quite tired, I will make rotation. But we're in 4th place and um, yeah, this season probably going to be playoff season to be honest because we're not good enough to make the the um, step up for automatics on the game um, and I feel that some players just just haven't been playing as well as they were at the start of the season so we're going to go on to this Tuesday and uh, yeah I'm, I'm going to keep on talking because I want you guys just to watch me do this because it's going to be bloody hard look to all of the knackered players um, Lundstrom you can come in Woodburn you can come in Keen Bryan can come off for him and we'll take I want eager names, he's been our best defender. I'll take out Stearman and uh, bring in um, I'll bring in Stearman for O'Connell. Uh, I think I just saw Craney actually. I will bring off Egan and give Craney a try just to see how good he is. Uh, we'll play him at right. No, we won't. We'll play him at centre centre back. Um, and then Richard Stearman coming on the left. We'll bring and Stearman in at left wing back. We'll bring in jo uh, sorry, um, Kieran Freeman in at right wing back. And we'll bring Sharp on from the Goldrick and we'll bring Washington in for um, Clark. So it's an entirely changed lineup other than Coots and Henderson. Um, this is my way of giving some players a chance who deserve it. Um, do I even give him a chance on the bench? Him. I, I think I'm going to bring on Hallam onto the bench. I think it's Jordan Hallam. I'm not so sure. I'll go check in a minute for Leon Clark. So, um, I think you guys understand that I'm frustrated at the fact that we've been piss poor. We've now got Brentford away. And uh, let me just go check if it is Jordan Hallam. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, where is he? Jordan Hallam it is. So he's going to get an appearance off the bench at some point in this match. So Brentford away. Here we come. We're either going to get demolished or some players are going to take the chance. Either way, I'm keeping the lineup changed like this. Let's go. So there's the Brentford lineup on screen right now. They've got Alan Judge, Force, Ben Rama as a front three. I don't even know that Force is. They must have signed him. Um, they've got a concert at centre back and um, Jean Vier as well. They've got a pretty decent lineup. The Kekron in midfield. I'm pretty sure he's took his chance in real life after Ryan Woods has gone. So um, at the I forgot what the stadium's called. Actually, that's poor. But at Brentford, let's get right into the match. Right, Ender Stevens is from his left wing. I'm going to take the shot and it's low and hard. It's not low. I mean, it's not hard, is it? Let's be honest. And that'll pour. It's a chance which I really should have took more of. And I probably should have trusted one of the strikers in the box, to be honest. But I thought last FIFA, that probably would have gone in. But it's not last FIFA anymore, is it? It's this FIFA. Right, Billy Sharp over to Washington. Time finishing. It's just gone over. I probably should have done it a bit better there. Or just not done the time finishing at all. But um, we're seeing some potential here. Connor Washington and Billy Sharp doing a nice little interchange and I'm seeing some decent movement oh my god I've been dominating this match that is literally their first proper attack where they haven't just kicked the ball out to play and Yanaris has scored a header from behind the penalty spot that is an OP feature in the game that is an overpowered feature which is very frustrating because you know you don't see it in real life every two games a player scores a header from there it's unrealistic, it's pathetic, and it shouldn't be a goal that makes me go 1-0 down. And, um, yeah, of all the goals that I could have conceded, I'd, I'd have preferred it to have been a screamer, to be honest. But uh, we're 1-0 down, and a stupid goal like that is making me having to be trailing this match. 
Right, Billy Sharp has crossed it in and it's poor. It's just bloody poor. We're getting to the chances and I don't think any of the two strikers have even got a shot on target yet. I thought after that first little interchange that they had where Connor Washington just got it over, that was a sign of better, but it's literally just got worse. Um, and I don't know to bring off to be honest, the only fit, proper fresh player on the bench is Hallam and Duffy and I don't really want to bring on Hallam yet, but then again he's got uh, 81 balance, yep, that's his best start, takes finesse free kick, so it looks like yeah, he do apparently sometimes do some uh, scouting of young players. Uh, I'm going to bring you on for Billy Sharp to be honest, because Sharp has literally had no chance in this game, and I don't intend on giving him more football than he deserves, so yeah, Hallam, 56 overall, I think in January this means that we'll probably need to get another striker, or at least use Chad Evans, I, will, I would recall him, but I don't think we've got that in the clause in the contract in real life and I just don't feel like it's realistic to record Chad Evans so um, yeah Jordan Hallam 56 overall comes off the bench and let's see if he can do anything <laughs> how do I react to that there's no way to react to it that's literally their first proper attack in the second half and they've scored let's just get right into um, playing again because there's nothing to commentate on to be honest They've literally just scored their first attack of the second off. But Hallam has got it through to Duffy. Straight back into the game after kickoff. I've got work in five minutes, guys. But I'm going to try and um, get an, an equaliser before I have to run off. But Jordan Hallam there was beautiful in his play. And, um, yeah, we're back into the match. Let's just hope that we don't lose by any more if we do end up losing. <laughs> right, they're going to make it 3-1 here, I think. Why is Barbe their furthest forward player? He's the centre back I mean I'm not complaining but it's just a bit odd and Jordan Hallam on the breakaway with David McGoldrick McGoldrick has managed to get that well because it was a poor pass and another poor pass but third time lucky Mark Duffy why have you passed it there why has he passed it there Mark Duffy is bloody awful I'm going to sell him in January I've decided transfer listed him as soon as I can because he's awful um, I've got to say the play that I bought on Hallam wasn't bad um, at times but his passing as you saw there were poor I don't know if to get him on a training drill or not. I'll have to see how old he is. I think he's about 20, which is the issue. Um, yeah, that lineup. I, I don't know if you heard me say it, but it's like I've got an A side and a B side. It shouldn't be like that. There should be competitions for A side or, at all times, and it shouldn't be like that. But, um, yeah, I think in January, I'm going to have to make use of, I think it were two or three players I sent myself to sign. Um, I don't know, I think I might just scrap that rule to balance and just sign 17 players because it seems that way, uh, which will make it successful. So in the next episode, you guys will see me starting off by playing Leeds. Ignore them saves there. So, um, yeah, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification button, so like, subscribe, enjoy the rest of your day. And episode 6 should be out as soon as possible, but no guarantees on when.